1,148.25. Those are the amount of hours of game development tracked since January 1st of 2019 up until January 1st of 2021, exactly two years apart. In this video, I summarize those 1,000 hours, all the hair pulling mistakes, all the self-imposed depraving challenges, the right ways and wrong ways of learning game development, my favorite exercises, and more. So let's go. Enrolled in a college course that uses game development to teach Java, I began my first devlog where I programmed a snake game, a 2D top-down prototype that has Trump in it, and a Minecraft mod that required me to painfully watch YouTube videos of 14-year-olds teaching me Minecraft modding. At the end of this chapter, my immensely and short-lasting drive got me to win all the awards of excellence given in this special course. So after that, my professor asked me to work for free on the college course, to develop the base games that later on college students would use. I also asked him for a paid TA jobs two years down the line and he left me on red. A small team and I created Frogger and a 2D JRPG prototype. Now, during this time, I was snorting everything that had the words Unity and Tutorial on the internet. From mobile galaxy shooters, to pixel art courses, to erotic anime po- Four months in, and I did the right thing one should do when learning game development. That is, to make small games. I made my first self-directed project that was supposed to be a temple run-like game. Then I recreated a scuffed Noctis Warp Strike effect from the video game Final Fantasy XV. Unfortunately, after that, I began exercising the wrong way to learn game development at an early stage. Pitching myself a big and juicy and dreamy idea of a game. The idea was a kingdom and resource management game with a dash of turn-based fighting. I didn't even get to the management part. So morally destroyed, I started doing drugs. I reverted back to the right way of doing game development by making a full and small hey, horror uh, game sorry. from start to finish within a month or so. Then I learned the branch of game development that is the hardest to master, at least for me. Art. So naturally, I frantically whirl my will towards a delusional attempt of honing this skill. From designing beach scenes to space scenes, I tried. But the major breakthroughs come later. Eight months in, and I stumbled upon a great way to learn game development that is, game jams, where a thousand game developers gather in teams, creating games surrounding a theme within a day or a week. I participated in the community game jam, where the theme was something about lying. Our game was a drone FPS, where you kill aliens that are actually people being relayed as aliens via the communications tower that gives you orders. Nine months after my game development journey, I still fell victim to dreamy, juicy, big game ideas. I bet now you know my type. <laughs> This time though, it was one of the game ideas I one day will create, a pirate game. During this time though, I learned a great deal, from the mathematics behind buoyancy forces, to the victorial nature of sailing with the wind, to free fall projectile physics. So one year after I began my game development journey, I took part in a challenge developing seven games in one week, that is one game per day. Some of these games were a bit dull and meh. Another was literally a ripoff from Doodle Jump because I was just too tired that day. Yet some of these concepts I still regret not continuing development on. For example, this text-based resource management space game, <sighs> title longer than that. I continued development on it for about half a month or so before letting it go. 13 months in, without any clear aim, I began experimenting with cellular automatons. Everything you see here is a chaotic universe created from three simple rules. 14 months in, and I did another self-deprecating challenge. You might begin to notice a pattern here. <laughs> Hosted by Jonas Tyroller, the challenge was designing 50 games in one day. It sounds stupid even to say it today, but that challenge was a marathon straight into an asylum. Then for the next six months, I still continued with my extremely ambitious, dreamy idea of a game. This again is a great no-no for progression and mental sanity. <laughs> Y'all know me. If I'm dancing with the devil, I'll fucking tangle on that dude. <laughs> Still one can learn a lot from dancing with the devil. For example, the inner workings of procedurally generated islands, or how to instantiate areas based on a Perlin map. How to save the data of these terrains to later spawn or despawn. The mathematical formulas for realistic waves via shaders a custom pathfinding tool for potential crew members, the pirate ship AI algorithms to detect obstacles or predetermine the player's upcoming position, the graphical and physical imitation of a whirlpool phenomenon, a custom behavior tree for AI decision making, and the list goes 
on. 21 months after I began my game development journey, I took part in my last game jam for now. Mixing genres. When creating oh, your game, shit. you should take oh, two different game shit. genres with a kid that had no ears but a strong heart. And after that, my latest accomplishment to develop and release a commercial game titled Dig and Seek, which is about digging and hiding your way away from a bloodthirsty seeker in a procedurally generated cave system. And that's it. That is two years of game development summed up in one video. Like this video and sub if you enjoyed, and I mean it, if you enjoyed. Just saying, do the thing. And if you're into challenging games, I'll leave a link below for my game, Dig and Seek. So till next time, I'm signing out.